Hey, my friends, Derek from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So this week we are covering, again, kind of like what we said on Monday, what happens when things don't go the way you had planned? We talked to you about Ruth yesterday, Ruth and Naomi. Stuff did not go well for them, and yet you saw Ruth cleaving to her mother-in-law, cleaving to her God and to her covenants that she's made, which leads us to Boaz, okay, this guy right here. So uh, chapter two, Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, who was her husband who had passed away, and his name is Boaz. The footnote here says, as Boaz means, in him is strength, swiftness, and quickness. Now, as we're going through Boaz, Boaz is very much a type of Jesus Christ. And you're going to see that many times as we go throughout this story. So what happened back then is during a time of famine, when you had some of the wealthy people who were out there, they're plowing through their grain, what would happen is they would leave some along the edges for the people who were not as wealthy to go ahead and glean through there. So Ruth was a gleaner. She was a hard worker. She was able to go in and what happened was verse number two, Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. I love that. And she said unto her, go my daughter, verse three, and she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers and her hap or her chance, good fortune. Again, the footnotes here in this book of Ruth is fantastic. Her hap was to light on the part of the field belonging unto Boaz, again, who is a kindred of Elimelech. So according to the law of Moses, if you are a woman and your husband passes away, the right goes to the nearest kinsman to then take care of you. Boaz is a kinsman to Naomi, which is important and understand there. So as Boaz sees Naomi, he's like, hey, who's this here? Verse 10, she fell on her face, bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger or I'm not of the house of Israel? Now, again, as we're doing this, you're looking for Jesus Christ. You go to verse number 11. Boaz answered and said unto her, it hath fully been shewed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and thou hast left thy father and thy mother, the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. He's like, man, you are, you are courageous. You are loyal. Verse 12, the Lord recompense thy work. One of the things to understand here is the Lord is a very compensatory God. He is one who will compensate. I love that. And a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of of Israel under whose wings thou art come to trust. That's a wonderful verse. Now, again, the footnotes here help out. The word wings right there, you click on the word wings and it takes you over to Psalm 57, which says, be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I love that. Again, you're focusing on Jesus Christ in this book and you're gonna see him helping out in so many different ways. Well, you go down to verse number 20. Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, blessed be the name of the Lord, because she just said, hey, I happen to go over here to Boaz. Blessed be the name of the Lord who hath not left off his kindness to the living and the dead. And Naomi said unto her, the man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. Here is another footnote that helps you out, right by where it says next kinsman. It uses the word redeemers one of those having the right to redeem. And so I looked up the word redeemer and many of you know the word redeemer. It's a wonderful word, but this is kind of cool. Just some of the definitions here. To buy back, to repurchase, to win back, to free from what distresses or harms, to free from captivity by payment or ransom, to extricate from or help to overcome something detrimental, to free from the consequences of sin. I love this to change for the better. So you can see there's some cool things there with regards to the Redeemer. The Redeemer is one of my favorite titles of Jesus Christ. So you go into the next chapter, chapter three, and this is kind of an interesting cultural thing. So she's there in the night, and what happens is she's there and Boaz is there and she kind of surprises him a little bit. Verse nine, he says, who art thou? And she said, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid for thou art a near kinsman. So that's kind of an interesting cultural thing there that happens, but it's more of a protection that takes place right there, which is interesting because the word atonement, it's a Hebrew word for cover. It means to cover. And so you can kind of see this redeemer 
covering Ruth. Verse 10, and he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast shewed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, insomuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor nor rich. So here she is following Boaz. So Boaz finds out in the next chapter that he is actually not the nearest of kinsmen, but the nearest of kinsmen declines the opportunity to be able to marry Ruth, which leads us to that chapter four. And you're going to see some wonderful ways of seeing Jesus Christ here. For example, verse is 9 and 10. Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Kilian's and Malon's at the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. Now at the end of that verse, he says, you are witnesses this day. You even go down to verse 14. The women said unto Naomi, blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman or a redeemer, that his name may be famous in Israel. We'll talk about that in a moment. Verse 15, he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine old age. I love that. There's some great references here to the Savior. You go down now, and here's where the cool thing is. Uh, verse 17, the women and her neighbors gave her a name, saying, there is a son born to Naomi, and they have called him Obed, and he is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now you go through all of these rest of these verses, and then you continue on even into the book of Matthew, where you start seeing that through this lineage of Ruth and Boaz, you have got Jesus Christ, which is wonderful. So I love a quote right here back in the end sign, back in 2002 where it says, thus Boaz is a type of Christ's love and redemptive power. We have a redeemer who has purchased or rescued us with a price, his precious blood. So as you're going through things that do not work out the way you had hoped they would work out, remember that there is a redeemer who is going to save. And I love that. All the definitions I gave you of Redeemer, he's going to do those very same things for you and I when things do not go our way. And I am grateful for him and have faith in him and his abilities to redeem. I know that's true. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks so much for sharing these messages. We're so grateful that you do that. And if you haven't already, go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Godspeed. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.